Mm-hmm. And that's huge. You know, these yeah. kids these days, they can just roll it out and, and be the best. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So that preparation, man, that's the key. You want right. to be great. And that's just not with basketball. That's with anything with life. Yeah. You know, if, if you're not putting the time to perfect that craft, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, you're never going to be able to amount to what you really could. You never right. will be able to amount to greatness. Stu Anima here, my co-host. As always, he is the man. He is the brand, Jay Thomas. What's going on, Stu? How you doing? Doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. You know, everybody clap it up real quick because Xavier got the dub. I tried to tell everybody Jay was a skeptic. He tried to play us, but it's all good, Jay. It's yeah. all good. All right, shout out to Chris Mack and Xavier. Uh, they just they just been a better program as of right now in Cincinnati. So congratulations to the Elite Eight. I can't believe I'm saying this, but y'all good. actually have a legit shot of going to the Final Four, if not even more. Because like, okay. the bracket, I tell people March Madness is all about matchups and who gets hot. So y'all true, got it. True. Y'all got it. Well, we have a special guest with us today. He is an entrepreneur, a former pro basketball player, Lakota, Lakota East Hall of Famer. James Dew is in the building. Clap it up. <laughs> Thank Clap it you, up. James. He is here. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate yes, it. sir. And yeah, um, good. You know, like I told you, I, I owed you some homage because I didn't know my research. But <laughs> you were a Nike All American, top 100 recruit. You were all city, all conference, all district, McDonald's All American nominee. A lot Dang. of accolades. And Dang. I just look back at basketball, especially in Cincinnati. I think about OJ Mayo mm-hmm. because he was, you know, a little before you, right? Oh, he was uh, one year younger than me. One year one younger than you. Than and mm-hmm. then I think about James Deuce before my time. And you just, you really set the trend. You led the city in scoring and. Uh, your high school jerseys are tired. You know, I played against your high school in, uh, when I was playing, and I always would see James Zeus, 23. So <laughs> just a legacy that you left. So uh, you were a top 100 recruit in high school. So how was that, you know, process for you, you know, going to the U? What made you choose to go to the U? Did you think about staying local? And, you know, was it a lot of pressure, et cetera? Well, that whole process for me, the recruiting process, I mean, it started really early. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was getting getting recruited, you know, right when I got into high school. Actually, before I even played a game, I, I credit my, my high school coach, Wally Vickers, for that, I mean, he had me taking unofficial visits before I even bounced the basketball on a high school floor. Wow. I went out to Wake Forest, went out to uh, Duke, North Carolina. So I'm already meeting, you know, meeting, um, you know, these coaches and things like that. And um, what happened to me the whole entire process? I really just stayed in the gym. You know, mm-hmm. and I always, me and my dad always joke about this. You know, when do we know I was going to be a Division One basketball player? I mean, we just knew it, you know, mm-hmm. from from a little boy. So I just knew the process was going to come, and um, and and then when I made my decision, you know, my top five, you know, I had Xavier in my top five. Um, you know, they offered me really, really early. I loved Dayton. They offered me early. Um, I had Ohio State in my top five, but Daquan Cook ended up um, committing there, so he's my position. So that that kind of threw them out the out the works. And then when Bob Huggins left. You know, I kind of, you know, wasn't thinking about UC anymore. Mm -hmm. So Xavier was definitely, you know, on my radar. Mm -hmm. I would say probably on my top three. But, um, you know, they had so many guards. And another thing, you know, staying at home, kind of just want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, want to get out of the city. Uh, West Virginia, you know, Coach Beeline, who's now at Michigan, he was, um, you know, I loved Coach Beeline. He was somebody I really wanted to play for. But uh, this is probably my fault. I took an unofficial visit out to Morgantown, and it was like a ghost town. Oh. Like, this is terrible. I don't want to spend four years here. I heard. I yeah, heard. It was bad. That. So then I took, a, I took an official visit to, to Miami. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, a guy I looked up to, Rob Height, you know, a local legend with the Wynton Woods. Um, you know, he showed me around. You know, rest is history. You fell in love with the lifestyle. Fell in love with, yeah, fell in love. So before that, you know, how did you gain exposure? I'm assuming assuming AAU, maybe some basketball camps, and uh, I know you play AAU all Ohio. So how did you get involved with them, and just how did you get your name out there? Well, really, it actually started, I would say, um, in eighth grade. Now, people locally knew me, mm-hmm. but I would say eighth grade, I decided to play with O.J. Mayo and Bill Walker, and, um, you know, they, they came to one of my junior high school basketball games, and uh, they recruited me to go play with them. So play the tournament with them. Um, we played against Speece Indy Heat. They had Greg Oden, Mike Conley, mm-hmm. Daquan Cook, and they hadn't lost in like five years. Mm-hmm. We right. beat them. And, um, you know, so that really kind of put me on the map a little bit more. And then I decided to go with All Ohio Red, you know, just because OJ's a year younger than me. Right. So I couldn't play with him. So mm-hmm. we actually formed a different D1 Greyhounds team, and it just wasn't the same. So I decided to go with All Ohio. And then playing with those guys, I mean, as a Nike team, you know, we're playing in the Peace Jam, Boo Williams, all these top tournaments. 
Now all I got to do is go out there and perform. And mm-hmm. then after that, you know. And that's what it's all about. We, we've yeah. talked about this. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes a part of success, when opportunity, you know, presents itself, you got to be able to perform. Absolutely. Right. And that's Absolutely. what you did. And see, and a lot of people get, they get in those tournaments. Yep. But then they freeze up. They freeze yeah. up. Yep. They freeze up. They freeze up. And, and I know, I, I know you're a coach. Yeah. And I also yeah. coach at Walnut uh, Junior High. Okay. And so, um. So what do you what do you say to a player who you know keeps freezing up or they know they can do it they've been working out right. they've been in the gym all of that different stuff but when they get in the game they they don't take the shot they know they can make and you know what I talk to my players about this a lot and and, and the thing with that is you know if you're prepared and you're in the gym and you're working mm-hmm. what there's no issue it should be no issue you shouldn't be nervous it should be nothing like that and I kind of just you know me as a coach I know you probably do the same as I think I put my players in certain situations to where when it happens in the game, you know, you got to you got you got to know what to do. You got to just react. Right. And I, and I really believe the the really good players and the great players, mm-hmm. you know, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. The situation they're going to perform and and what I tell my players is go out there and have fun, let loose. At the end of the day, it's just it, it is a game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It is a game, so I and that's how I kind of approached it. You know, I want to win, I want to be the best, but I always had it in the back of my mind, you know, Never be really nervous about it because at the end of the day, it's a game that I love. Right. And you should never be nervous to do something you love. Right. That's a good See, one. and I always ask my players, who do you think the best shooter in the NBA is? Mm-hmm. And most of them be like, oh, Steph Curry or this guy. I'm like, what if it's so and so, so and so? Right. Somebody we've never heard of, but because of fear oh, yeah. or doubt, they don't take the shots they know they can make. Because if Steph Curry misses, the shots that he takes sometimes, like, oh, he whack. Right. He right. a ball. Oh, why would he shoot that? Right. But because he makes them, it's like, oh, he can hit those. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But for the guy who can probably shoot just as good as him but don't take those shots, nobody knows. Nobody cares. And you know what? Those are, And we call those practice players. Mm. It's guys that you know, I went to college with mm-hmm. and, you know, guys even in my, I played high school ball with. They were killing They were practice. dominating in practice. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would, if you came in the gym, you would look at them and say, that's got to be the best player. <laughs> but then when they get in the game, lights come on. They shut down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think that's what separates the great players, you know, from the average players. Mm-hmm. You know, can you do it when it counts? And I, and I think that's huge. Mm-hmm. That's what makes sense. So yeah. what were some of, of your, uh, you know, favorite memories playing at Lakota, at Lakota East in high mm-hmm. school? I mean, Ooh. I know that if you can give me, like, a, your top three or just some of your top memories, because I know you were a heck of a scorer in high school and you just killed it. I would say my uh, one of my favorite actually is my sophomore year. We played against uh, our Savior, New American, and um, they had a, they had a guy on their team who was a top 100 recruit, uh, Juan Palacios. I forget his name with the Louisville. And um, you know everybody talking about he could actually go out of high school. I mean he was he was a big time player. And um, I'm a little sophomore. We're playing up at Flying the Hoop, up in um, you know up in Dayton Dayton area, and uh, dropped 32 points. You know only missed three shots the entire game. So that's probably one of my my top ones. And then um, obviously we get my jersey retired senior night against. Your Fairfield guys, mm-hmm. uh, they, retired, uh, they retired it. They or retired your last? while I was still playing my, on my senior night, and it was a big surprise. I had no idea. My senior wow. night, um, you know, we walk out, me and my parents, and uh, my coach told me before. He said, hey, "James, I got a, a surprise for you." Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I'm like, I don't know what, what he's going to so do. So you literally were like the LeBron James of your school, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Dang. So I mean, that, and that, that whole moment was, you know, it was incredible. They presented me with the, with the ball in the middle of the court. I also broke the scoring, the district scoring record. Mm-hmm. And then um, that next thing you know, before you know, they dropped the jersey down in the middle of the floor. And I, that whole night, I played, you know, with my jersey up there, and my college coach was also in attendance. So it was, that was a really special night. That would probably be, if I played, that would be the best game. Mm-hmm. I know it was packed. Oh, it was crazy. It was packed. You remember who y'all played? You said Fairfield. Fairfield? Yeah. Drop, drop thirty. Dang. Nice thirty ball. You know, last time I guess playing it was on the easy. court. Well, I, I know it ain't always easy. Sometimes you get a challenge. So, who were some of the players that you went against? That was maybe the toughest players you ever went against. Okay. Uh, who were some of the best players you played with and against? I would say, um, in high school or college, just all together. High school, college, and pro. I would say high school um, players I played with. Uh, I'd have to say, obviously, OJ Mayo, Bill Walker. Um, my buddy Josh Chichester, you know, got a chance to play with him. You know, he ended up playing at Louisville, basketball and football for Louisville. Thank He's you. also my rival and my teammate. So mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> um, I would say Josh. Um, those are probably the, the, the top guys I got a chance to play with. Then my buddy Cordell Boyd, you know, him, me and him were a dynamic duo during high school. Um, and playing against, I would say, 
I had to go with. You were in the ACC. That was so. ACC, yeah. So Ty yeah. Lawson, um, mm-hmm. Wayne Ellington, the toughest guy I ever at the guard, and, and people look at me like I'm crazy because he's not a big time NBA star. Was Jared Dudley played at Boston College uh, and um, the Suns? So the Suns, yeah, right, yeah. Jared Dudley. And um, so people don't realize my freshman year was a senior year. And um, in high school, I wasn't known as a defensive player. But mm-hmm. when you get to college, you got to do different things to get on the court when you're a freshman. Right. So I had to learn how, you know, to, to take that seriously. So I mm-hmm. became the best defender all four years on uh, at Miami. So I had to guard Jared Dudley. People don't know Jared Dudley's like six seven. Mm-hmm. So I have never to this day, besides him, been cooked. When somebody, I just, cooked. what can I do? What can I do? Right. And I, I tell you, he was putting me in the post. He was sizing me up, shooting threes in my face. I'm like, Dang. Nothing I could do. Right. And uh, he ended up getting ACC player of the year that year. So I would say mm-hmm. by far, Jared Dudley was the toughest player I had to play against and guard. But, um, but yeah, you know, Ty Lawson, you know, I would say that North Carolina team, because they ended up winning it my junior year. Mm-hmm. And then Duke, you know, they had John Shire, Nolan Smith. Mm-hmm. So a lot of those guys. And um, um, Devin Downey no, uh, right. went to UC. He went to South Carolina. Yeah, South that. Carolina. We, um, you know, he, he torched us. But we ended up beating them to actually win the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, but Devin Downey was a great player I played against. So, uh, But I would have to say the best player of all time I played against was the Michael Jordan. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, I beat him. So I guess – you guys can call me. The so guy how did you, you meet him? Like, how <laughs> did you beat him for real? I beat him. I beat him. How did you meet Dang. him? Like, how, how this whole thing happened? Um, my father, he he, uh, he got me to go to the Michael Jordan camp. Oh. I was ten years old. And the cool story about this is, um, and, and, I, and I do credit Michael Jordan for this. At the camp, you know, most a lot of times, you know, these guys will come and they'll show their face and and leave. Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan was at the camp all day, every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's watching the kids and things like that. So anybody got anything bad to say about Michael Jordan? I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. So that was incredible. And um, and a cool story about how I got a chance to play against him, the day before, we're playing one-on-one against our team. And, you know, I'm, 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 I love Michael Jordan. So I'm doing all his moves. I'm doing a jab step. I'm shooting fadeaways. I'm doing everything. I didn't know he was watching me the entire time. My dad actually took pictures and then got in my, in my dad's basement right now, parents' basement. You can literally see him sitting back with his arms crossed just watching me play the whole time. So you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching, right? Mm. So the next day, and he told me afterwards, and the next day, we, um, he's like, I'm going to call up you know, three guys to play one-on-one. And I, I had arrived late because I didn't stay on the dorms. I stayed at a hotel, and I'm, mm. I'm in the way, way back. So all the kids, you know, it's about what, 500 kids there. They're all raising their hand, you know, pick me, pick me. I'm not even raising my hand because no way he's going to find me. But then I see him. It looks like he's looking for somebody. He's coming back. He's coming back. He looks at me. He's like, you. So I'm 10 years old. I'm like, me? You know, that's the first thing I said. Right. Like, Let's go. So I walk Dang. up there. I'm Jordan down. I got the Jordans on. I got the Jordan, uh, b- the Bulls red uniform, the shorts, and the jersey. And the rest is history. Got, got wow. up there, got Where was the play. camp? Was uh, it? At Elmhurst College in Chicago. Wow. See, if I be Michael, you, everybody yeah. will know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially I mean, as a coach, yeah. that would be my first thing yeah. I'd say. Like, yeah, yeah, just let you know I'll be Michael Jordan. Oh, I got to, man. <laughs> I got to. And the funny thing, my, my boys always joke about it because I would say, you know, I post on IG Throwback Thursday. Mm-hmm. At least once every three months, I post that picture. If you, if you follow, <laughs> what's, your, what's your Instagram? My Instagram name, uh, uh, Ed James Dues. Okay, okay, if you follow this dude, you'll see it because I see it all the time. I enjoy it. Uh, I know better than to play him because <laughs> everybody knows that he was the truth. And uh, after college, you know, you play professionally. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't really plan out in the NBA, right. but you got a chance to have a good career, great career. So how did you um, adapt to playing overseas? You know, just the food, the culture, yeah. where did you play at, uh, et cetera. Right. Well, I got a chance. Um, the cool thing about this is I got a chance to try out for some NBA teams, you know. So I ended up trying out for the Heat, and, um, and but the cool thing about that, I ended up going overseas, went over to Israel, like you said, and I had a blast. You know, first I started off in Turkey, and Turkey was a little different. It was in Istanbul. Um, literally, the first few days I lost like eight pounds. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a picky eater, and I didn't like their food whatsoever. <laughs> I, went to, I went to KFC, had no salt on the chicken. It was just oh, really bland. I'm like, what? What is going what on? What is this? Yeah. Uh, uh, but I ended up going over to Israel, and I loved Israel. I mean, the people, mm. the majority of them could speak English. Um, my teammates were great. The food were, was incredible. I don't know if you guys like seafood. You know, their mm-hmm. salmon oh, is, yeah, is incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a blast over in Israel. You know, the league was great and the competition was great. And, you know, I had a really good, really good, really good career and good time over there. That's great. And, like, you know, when I was a kid, I had pride. I thought, like, oh, no, nah, if I ain't playing D1 or if I ain't going to right. NBA, mm-hmm. I'm hanging it up. But to the players out there, if you have an opportunity to go overseas, mm-hmm. you know, you can make good money over there, oh, have yeah. that great lifestyle, and play the game you love. So it would probably be a great experience yeah. being in oh another country. And that's you know. what I realized. I mean, first of all, the money you make over there is tax free money. So mm-hmm. you can make a ton of money over there. I mean, I some, make six some, dudes, yeah, some dudes over there are making. 
making millions. Mm-hmm. That I know personally. You know right. what I mean? And um, and as far as I know, you just said something about, you know, guys are so stuck on D1 mm-hmm. and, you know, and being in the NBA. People don't realize, man, you know, um, and, and, and that's it. Don't, don't be, you know, don't be upset about that because a, a lot of kids to this day still think like that. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because I always say the first thing is to graduate debt free if you can. So if you can get a scholarship playing D2 and you get a scholarship playing anywhere. And it's, everything's paid yeah, for. everything's paid for and Take it's a sport. It. You know what I mean? You're doing something you love, something you enjoy to do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's D1 or D2. People are so stuck on that. And uh, and you don't understand. A lot of people can go D2 that I know personally are still playing over that overseas and overseas. Making, yeah, making a lot of money. And I had an opportunity to play overseas, not overseas, D2. Mm-hmm. But I could have if I excelled. And yeah. I was like, nah, I'm going to just hang it up. So, you know, yeah. you, you don't want to stop if right. unless you are physically enabled or literally you're done. So Bingo. that's that's my message to the people out there watching that I would say. And I heard, too, you know, that, you know, D2 or whatever, that the competition is like fierce. It ain't, yes. it ain't no slow. People, fierce. people don't realize this. I Juco, always tell people this. Juco yes. is hard. I tell people all the time, the, 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 best, D2, the best D2 schools mm-hmm. can compete are just as good as the lowest D1 schools. Mm-hmm. The only mm-hmm. thing that separates them are maybe athletic ability. And a lot of times, the guys who are playing D2, they just didn't get the shot, shot. to play D2. Or they, or they were late bloomers. Yeah, or late bloomers, things like mm-hmm. that. So, um, yeah. and a buddy of mine, like I said, I mentioned before, Cordell Boyd, I mean, this dude right here, he's the only guy I know in the GMC history that led the league in, in uh, field goal percentage. Shot like 70%. Really good score, really good slasher. He just didn't get a chance to be at a chance, they, 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 you know, to showcase his, his talent. Yeah, it's all right about AU opportunity like yeah. because, you know, See? I had talent, but yeah. I didn't have the opportunity Bingo. to get those minutes and to, right. to take those shot selections. Everybody's yep. different. So, like we always say, take advantage of the opportunities when it's given to you. Absolutely. Right. But now that you're uh, done playing, you're a coach, you train. Uh, so how did you get started with that? And now you can give kids the opportunity right. to showcase their talents and yeah. to help them work on their games too. You know, yeah. you both. Uh, are doing that, which is it's great to see that mm-hmm. for people that that's played the game and come back and help people to get to where you were at. Right, and and, and really, I credit that whole thing, and I ended up starting my own business, uh, Doozy Lead Training, and I, and I credit that actually to my big brother. You know, uh, he's he's an entrepreneur, and um, mm-hmm. you know, and I kind of follow in his footsteps when it comes to that. He owns his own Taekwondo school and a studio mm-hmm. and things like that. Right. And um, you know, seeing him do that, and you know, he's blessing all these kids, giving back. Cause my brother is a you know fifth, fifth degree black belt, so you know, he has all that knowledge, and he wanted to give it back. And I started thinking, you know, I said, Dwayne, you know, that's a great idea. Maybe I should do something like that with basketball. And um, you know, and in the community still, you know, I, I have that name where you know people want to you know want to want to get knowledge from me and things like right. that when it comes to basketball. Ball. And um, and that's what made me do it, you know, just to mm-hmm. get back to the community. And that's why I started coaching, just to be around the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you have all this knowledge, you know, it's crazy not to bless other people with it. Mm-hmm. And that's just how I see it. You know, if, I, if I'm not, if I'm, if I have all this knowledge, I'm not giving it to other people, then what's the point of having it? Exactly. You know, that's so in your amazing. opinion, what do you think makes a good coach? Great question. So, yeah, and, say, and, and funny yeah, about it is, I was, was talking good. about my coach, you know, last night in mm-hmm. and, 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 uh, and my induction, and I was, um, and I think what makes a great coach is when you realize it's not all about basketball. Mm. When you can start teaching these kids um, about something deeper than that, and using basketball as a vehicle, you know, to get them where they want and help them learn about different things. And some things my coaches taught me was just commitment. You know, the dedication, having integrity, and um, and, and I credit my coach to this day, uh, Wally Vickers, and I and I say he's one of the best coaches ever because. It wasn't all about basketball. It was life lessons. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. me being the star I am, he never, you know, he never. He, it was never okay. I'm, I mean, Kyle James. You know, he's a star. He's the best player. No, I got yelled at like anybody else. Right. If I wasn't taking care of business off the court mm-hmm. or on the court, he, you know, and that's what I love about him. And that's what, you know, I think great coaches, like I said, it's not all about the game. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you want to win, but when they leave, mm-hmm. you know, what when they look back, what did they get from the game of basketball? Mm-hmm. Wow. You know that they can apply in their everyday life, and that right there to me is huge. That's that makes right. a great shout coach. out to LeBron. Always, you know, the movie more than a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always use that hashtag, hashtag when I talk about basketball because it is more than a game. To it me. is more than because a game. it changed. You know, my life changed all of our lives. I always tell people if it wasn't for basketball, we would have even never even teamed up to do the podcast right. because we were teammates. Right. That's exactly. Huge. So it's, and it's, it's, huge, like it's you amazing. Said too, mm-hmm. It's all about friendships, mm-hmm. the ah. friends you make. I mean, my best friends to this day. Are all my teammates? Mm-hmm. My teammates. I mean, mm-hmm. to this day, if you, um, I have a chat room on my phone, a little message with all the the Hurricanes that played in Miami with me, and before and after, Dang. it's like fifty of us. 
And we're Seriously. constantly, every single day, you know, I turn it on Do Not Disturb. Cause it's, <laughs> every day, though, we're talking. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and people don't realize that that is huge, man. The, the friendships you make, the bonds you make, yep. it's bigger, it's deeper than best. I'm still see, cool see, it's people. funny that mm-hmm. y'all, y'all both said that because I tell people all the time. I told my kids this. I'm, I'm like, look, no matter how far you go in this sport, for everybody, even Michael Jordan and Kobe, at some point it will end. No matter what. And what's going to be left? What's going to be left? When the smoke clears, what's going to still be there? If there's nothing, you robbed yourself. Right. You're right. You know, and I always tell them these two things right here the relationships. Mm-hmm. And the life lessons. Single. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that you said the life lesson, you said it really, because that's what it is, man. That's what it's all about, man. All about. So I thought that was great. That One day that ball's going to stop bouncing. It's what did you stop. get from it? Yep. What did you get from it? <laughs> exactly. What we'll talk about more it? what you're doing now after, after uh, you know, basketball and everything. I know more of what everybody else will learn. Mm-hmm. But where can people uh, get involved with uh, Dudes Elite? And, you know, get trained, you know, where can they find like, more information about that? Um, honestly, right now, you know, I have a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. But uh, the main thing I would say is the by email, um, you know, doozyleet at gmail.com. And, um, you know, obviously my Instagram, I post a lot of things on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really how you can find me is it, definitely by email. And uh, right now, you know, working out, I would say anywhere from 40 to 50 kids on a rolling calendar all year round. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, all age range. I got college players. I got high school. You know, I got kids who were, in, you know, five years old, my son's age. You know, right. so definitely yeah. just trying to give back and as much as I can. And I know you host a local basketball camp in Cincinnati uh, periodically. Mm-hmm. So who have been some players that stopped in and okay, yeah. helped out people that, that you're connected with as well? Um, for my camp, I do it every summer. I, I usually try to do it the last week. In July, um, you know, so some some of the the players that came by, you know, I had Evan Turner, mm-hmm. who's now with the Blazers, played at Ohio State. Jared mm-hmm. Sellinger, really good friend of mine, mm-hmm. um, you know, played at Ohio State, played mm-hmm. for the Celtics and the Raptors. And then John Diebler is uh, one of my best friends. You know, John Diebler, people might not know this, he's the number one scorer in high Ohio. school Ohio basketball history. Wow, yeah, big time player, big time player. Um, funny story about him, uh, we always would call each other in my senior year, his junior year, and mm-hmm. kind of tell each other our, our stat line and say, right. "How'd you do tonight?" Mm-hmm. So I had 35 and 14 one night against Oak Hill. So I mm-hmm. call him up excited, like, hey, man, I was balling out. So what did you do? Oh, I had 77. Wow. <laughs> oh, so I'm like, well, thanks, man, for uh, you know, ruining, my, ruining, ruining my night. I thought I had a great oh, night. Man. But uh, you know, he's, a, he's a great guy. He comes to my camp every single year. Uh, mm-hmm. Jawan Staten, mm-hmm. you guys know him from West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's now overseas playing. He's spent a little time with the Warriors. So I try to get some NBA guys or some really talented college players always to come to my camp. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so you know, it's, it's enough to hear from me, but right. it's even better to hear from some guys who maybe made it further than me. Right, giving them an the exposure. Absolutely. The exposure. That is so crucial, Absolutely. man. So crucial. Exactly. So, crucial. so we talked about the competition. You know, you had it in uh, the A the AAC, well ACC, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, living in Miami, Florida as a college student, so uh, how tough was it in that conference, game in and game out, mm-hmm. and even just living down there and adjust to that new lifestyle away from home. Well, and just that new lifestyle, I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm a, I'm a really, um, I'm a homebody. I'm family oriented. Well, mm-hmm. actually, not a homebody anymore. But um, <laughs> back then, I definitely was. Mm-hmm. And um, it was tough for me, I'll be honest. My freshman mm-hmm. year, um, we weren't very good. Um, you know, the first time being away from home like that. And, um, you know, I, I struggled. You know, mm-hmm. I struggled, and, and uh, I want to transfer, I'll be honest. You know, I just was not happy. And then um, after, you know, did some pray, you know, after praying on it and talking to my family, you know, I decided to stay. And uh, from that point on, I mean, it was great. Basketball was great. We were going to NCAA tournament. You know, so living-wise, it was, it was outstanding. I would say basketball, you know, I had to adjust a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. going coming from being, you know, a top 100 recruit, being the best player in the city, one of the top players in the state and in the country to go to be a freshman, and you're not a scorer anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, your first year. Mm-hmm. So that's why I had to adapt and, and um, work on my defense and things like that. And, and the crazy part about it is that freshman year, I, even though it was my worst, you know, if you look at, you know, my stats, you know, it was the worst year. But I think that helped me to have an even better career because I was forced to do something different. Mm-hmm. I was forced to get better and get out of my comfort zone. Right. And that's to work on some things I never really focused on working on. Right. So I ended up leaving college with a thousand point score and, um, you know, had, a, had an amazing career. And, and I really credit that. It's, it's crazy to the struggle of my freshman year, mm-hmm. having to, you know, to adapt and things like that. But, uh, I mean, I, I had a blast down there. Yeah, that's what's up. you got to struggle and go through hardships to know how strong you are. Absolutely. Right. You, you also never it exposes know. you to what you need to work on. Bingo. Exactly. You know, that's, they always say uh, losing will teach you way more than winning. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> definitely way more, way mm-hmm. more. And, yeah. um, 
you know, now that you've, you know, played through the foul and now that you're not playing basketball, you still are using team sports and entrepreneurship. Absolutely. And, you know, you got into that and you became a business owner. So who kind of like introduced you to that? And, you know, how did you even get involved in the entrepreneurship? And, and, uh, and really, I would say my mom, my dad, my brother, you know, those, those are the ones who really, um, you know, kind of and follow my brother's footsteps majority. Mm-hmm. And, um, and my mom, my mom, my dad as well. You know, my mom, my dad, you know, they both make a great income, work for the government and things like that. And then they were just kind of saying, you know, James, you know, you don't have to sit behind a desk, you know, for, for the next 40, 50 years. Mm-hmm. You know, there is something else you can do. And, uh, and my parents, like I said, both make a lot of money, but they didn't have enough time really to spend their money. They were constantly mm-hmm. working and constantly working. Mm-hmm. That's why now, you know, now that they're retired, you know, they're, they're jet set and they're gone every month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, you know, they kind of gave me that, that, that mindset. And that's why I want to do something a little bit different, why I am an entrepreneur, because I like to own my own time and do mm-hmm. what I want to do when I want to do it. And that right there is huge for me. So I definitely credit my parents and my brother for that. And, um, and, and it's been great ever since. That's what's up. For those who don't know, he calls himself the travel king. So I guess I'm the travel prince. I'm trying to get up there with King Dude. So you've been to some awesome places. So where are some of your top places besides Miami? And where are some places that you want to go? Okay. Or you got booked, et cetera. I would say my favorite place is uh, probably Italy. I've been there several times. I got a chance to go there, uh, you know, in high school. Mm-hmm. Went over there to play basketball while I was in high school. But oh, then I went as an adult. And, and Italy, by far, is probably one of my favorite places. Mm-hmm. I love Jamaica. Going back there again this summer. Um, I love you know Dominican Republic, places like that. I'm actually going to be going to Spain this July. I'm actually taking a basketball team over to Spain. So I'm definitely, you know, I, I love getting out of here and, and traveling the world. You said you're taking a basketball team? Yes. Like, wow. uh, um, it'll be a, couple, a lot of kids from Cincinnati taking a few kids over there. And, mm-hmm. and me. Come, you you know, I'm, I'm yeah. going. Like, you're not about to leave <laughs> me. My sister coach. Why yeah. can't my coach take me to Spain? Yeah. <laughs> we went to, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to Kentucky. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, catch me in Italy with James. <laughs> I'll be there. So, That's loud, uh, I know that you got loud. a son. Mm-hmm. Uh, the future number one pick of the NBA draft. That's right. Yep. That's right. Uh, James Dudes Jr., right? James Dudes is second. The second. The second. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you got a son. You got a daughter. Yes. And, you know, you t- I've seen you taking your son on trips. Oh, yeah. How important is it for you to leave a legacy? And also, give your kids. You know, the lifestyle that maybe you never had. Absolutely. Or take them to experiences that you never had as a kid. Absolutely. And, and, and my kids are my why. You know, everything I do today is for my baby girl, mm-hmm. you know, and my baby boy. You know, and, and, and the examples I'm, and things I'm doing now, you know, the hard work I put in now, you know, is to let them know that anything is possible. You know, I chase chasing different dreams, t- chasing different goals. Mm-hmm. And that's huge for me. Because no matter what, your kids are going to be looking at you. Right. You know, if, I, if, I, if I'm telling my, my son, you know, hey, it was hard, I gave up, I quit, mm-hmm. and it gives them a chance to do that same exact thing. Now, mm-hmm. back in their mind, they say, well, you know what, daddy quit. Daddy didn't go out for his dreams and go after his goals. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's okay. You right. know, that's something I'm really, really passionate about. And, and, and like you said, leaving a legacy. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at what I've done with basketball, you know, and if my kids don't want to play basketball, that's great. You know, whatever they do, I'm going to support them. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing about it is, you know, that's going to motivate them even more, especially if they do play basketball. Right. You know, they say, well, if daddy did this, I want to be better than my dad. Right. You know what I mean? That's something mm-hmm. that I want to do. You know, and, and I know my parents left a great example for me and my, and my brother and my sister to, to try to outdo them. You know, mm-hmm. and, and it's funny to say that. Is, and um, I never thought I would want somebody to be better than me at basketball. Mm-hmm. But, like, I really want my son to be and my daughter to be way better than me. Get right. their jerseys retired and get inducted in the Hall of Fames and play mm-hmm. pro ball. And, and are, are excelling whatever they do, right. but uh, believing that legacy is, is huge for me. Every single everything I do every day is for my my boy and my girl. Mm. So, Spire. what do you think it means to leave a legacy? Like, what do you think? Um, like when, you, when a lot of people say I want to leave a legacy and all of that. So, what do you think? Like, what is a legacy? In my mind, a legacy is something that will be there long, long after you're gone, long mm. after your kids are gone. And their and their kids and so on and so forth and and, mm-hmm. and to me it could be you know it could be anything you know right. and and right now I think basketball wise mm-hmm. you know the legacy is already there you know you know yeah. my you know twenty years from now fifty years from now you'll walk into the Cody East you'll see my jersey hanging right. things like that but that's just with basketball mm-hmm. you know now you know being an entrepreneur and things like that changing lives you know I want to be able to say I want people to be able to say you know if it wasn't for James Dues you know the way my family is right now. You know, it, it wouldn't be the way it is. You know, I want to be able to change families down the road and um, and, and have them be looking at me and saying, you know, if it wasn't for James Dews going out there, being courageous and stepping out of his comfort zone, doing things like that, you know, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And, and I think leaving a legacy is something that's just bigger than you. 
mm. you know, bigger than you. And I think that's really what it's all about. Mm. See, and see, another thing, man, is you said um, with dreaming big, you know, your parents push you to dream big and mm. all of that. But for some kids, you know, their parents are like, no, you're going to be a doctor. Right. Be a lawyer. Yep. But they like that. I, I want to go to the league. Right. No, no, no. Right. Y'all, that's cute and everything, but that's mm-hmm. probably not going to happen. Right. And, you know, and then kids have it in their head like, well, why would I work hard if it's probably not going to happen? Right. So what do you say to a kid that, you know, is like, because that's probably most kids' situations. Oh, yeah. You know, so what do you, what do you say to a kid like that? I always say get away from stinking thinking. You know what I mean? Get away from that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. surround yourself around the people who have, you know, have the things you want or at least the same goals. And that, to mm-hmm. me, is huge. You know, um, it's all about who you're around. You know, you know, if you're going right out right. and surround yourself around the people who have the things you want. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was always blessed. You know, I, I'll be honest, I'm blessed with parents who, you know, who didn't force me to do anything. You know, right. I mean, my dad didn't force me to play football, didn't force me to play basketball. He just, you know, I was into it. I liked it. And mm-hmm. he just, you know, he helped me excel at it. You know, he never told me I had to do this or I can't do this. And, and I always just say, man, you know, who are you surrounding yourself by? But I know that I know that is kind of tough though mm-hmm. to, to um, you know especially as a parent and things Dude, like that. Right. You go home. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. And the best thing I can say is you know just kind of try to take that in one ear out the other and, and surround yourself around the people who have what you want and um, and the same goals and things like that. Right. You took it. Took it. The question I was about to ask. I was about to ask you. You know, for the people who want to aspire to be pro athletes or entrepreneurs, oh, yeah. what advice would you give them? Well, you just pretty yeah. much just took it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got you got any other questions too? Well, yeah, you know, um, it's just my one of my biggest things I try to tell my kids is five years from now, we will see who took it as a hobby, bingo, and who took it serious. Yep. We will see what you did with your time versus what he did with his time. You know, we will see in right. five years. We will see who was really putting in the work. Absolutely, and so. Um, just talk about a little bit the importance of the preparation part. Before you even get to the game, you got to be prepared. You got to put the time in the gym. Absolutely, you know. And and, and, and I'll look at um and my my young boy Jared Cox right now. You know, he's a he's a he's a junior right now at Lakota East. Mm-hmm. Here's a kid I coached back when he was in seventh grade, eighth grade, and and I knew he had talent, but it was really raw. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just stronger than everybody, more athletic, and I knew eventually, you know, he'd have to work on a skill. Mm-hmm. All these, these people will catch him. And, um, you know, last year as a sophomore, you know, mm-hmm. he, he, played, he played JV as a freshman. As a sophomore, he played varsity, real limited minutes, um, averaged about six points a game. But he spent time in the gym. He got better year after year after year. Before, he was just a slasher, you know, um, shoot 25% from the three. Now mm-hmm. you fast forward to this year, as a junior, led the GMC in scoring. Okay, went from shooting 25% to shooting over 40% from the three. Mm. All right, and he just put the time in the gym. He's a hard worker. And like you said, you know, some people are blessed with just the talent. They're mm. blessed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But no matter what, hard work is going to beat that every day. And yeah. here's a kid who he had the, had the talent because he was athletic, his athletic mm-hmm. ability. Right. But he spent countless hours in the gym, and now he's a great shooter. Right. And now, you know, he's, he was, um, I don't mention all state, first team all city as a junior, only underclassman. And it's because he put the time and the work in. Mm-hmm. And some of these kids think they can just, like you said, five years from now, four years from now, we're going to see who's working. Right. Mm-hmm. And those are the kids who are getting passed up. Mm-hmm. But the kids who are really in love with the game mm-hmm. and they want to perfect their craft, you're going to get better like my buddy Jerry is doing. You know, and next year, this guy's going to average 25 points a game. I guarantee it. Be the player of the year because I'll every be there year, to watch. He's, yeah, he's, he's putting time in, mm-hmm. and that's huge. You know, these yeah. kids these days they can just roll it out and and be the best. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So that preparation, man, that's the key. You want right. to be great, and that's just not with basketball. That's with anything with life. Yeah. You know, if if you're not putting the time to perfect that craft, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, you're never going to be able to amount to what you really could. You never right. will be able to amount to greatness. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Speaking of greatness, it's been a great tournament. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Xavier again. Good. So we'll go ahead and go around, and uh, before we end it, what are our uh, March Madness predictions? So, Stu, you go ahead. First of all, like I said, I try to tell people, especially Jay, man. Put the camera on Jay. Good, good. All right, so here's what's going to happen. Xavier's going to get to the Final Four. I'm going to say that. Um, that's really all I'm going to say, man. That's all I really want to say. So whoever's next. Go ahead. Well, I was rooting for my Hurricanes. They got okay. knocked out early. But um, I want Xavier to win it up. You know, Coach Mack recruited me. I love Coach Mack. Love Xavier. Um, but I think UCLA is going to win it all. I want Xavier to win it, but I think I'm going with UCLA. I think the ball kid is just, you know, he's, got, phenomenal. he's, he's phenomenal. He's great. Yeah. Great player. All right. You ready? 
All right. Shout out to Trayvon Blewett. And he's the truth. And for the scouts that's passing up on him, I think he needs to be a first round pick. Crazy. That game boy, after yeah, game, he, he mm-hmm. performs. So I want Xavier to do well, want him to perform. Uh, but I'm going to go with UCLA. Yep. Uh, I just feel like Lonzo Ball, the floor general he is, mm-hmm. it's not even that the points, he just he leads his team. So yeah. go Bruins. Uh, I said they're going to win it all. And you got anything else before I end it off? Yeah, just one question. Usually I end with two questions, but you already answered uh, the what's your why. Mm-hmm. So just um, when it's all said and done, you know, what do you want people to say? James Dews was. When it's all said and done, that's a great question. I was ever asked me that. I would say when it's all said and done, I want people to say James Dews was. Hmm, that's a good question. But nobody's ever asked you. I've done a lot of interviews. You know, it's a, a fun, lot of lot funny of story <laughs> too. This is, is what you think about it too. Right. Funny story is uh, we had a, a guest, Chase Crawford. Okay. And uh, I asked him a question, and he he flipped it back on me, and I was frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked the like, question. I was you like, dang, he got me. That's good. That's, that's a great yeah. question. Um, I would say, you know, when it's all said and done, mm-hmm. I would like people to say, you know, James Dews was. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> man. Something. Something. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, I know. Cause I want to cause I, I really, this is a great question. I really want to think about it. I, right, I don't want to yeah. just say anything. Right, um, just, to, yeah. just to say it. Right. But mm-hmm. I, I would say, you know, James Dews what was a person you know who what was a giving person you know mm-hmm. you know and not just mm-hmm. giving you know like a handout but you know giving with knowledge you know um you know giving back you know you know you know in the community not just with riches but just um just you know with my mind things I've learned mm-hmm. you know I want everybody to say you know James wasn't a selfish person you know mm-hmm. the knowledge he had you know he gave it to people you know he gave it to the youth gave it to you know people mm-hmm. who were struggling in, in different avenues and and that's mm-hmm. something I do now and I strive right. for that you know every single thing I do today you know whatever I learn you know I want to I want to be able to bless somebody else mm-hmm. so um, I guess giving you know and that's something that's really huge to me mm-hmm. okay amazing. Amazing. You got anything else? Uh, no, man. I do want to say one thing. You know how something was in uh, something was in my mind for a long time, ever since we was talking about uh, coaches, because mm-hmm. the power of coaches is it's crazy. Absolutely. I, you know, and I, I I think some people don't even realize you know the effect you have on kids as a coach, and um, I would just say to any coach, you know, that you're not coaching basketball players right. if you're a basketball coach. Right. You're coaching people. Mm-hmm. And when you're coaching people, you got to realize you can't just be a coach on the court. You got to be a coach off the Bingo. court. They're always watching. Always, always watching. Always, and you never know what your you, what your kids are going through. Right. You know, and that's one thing that I learned uh, being my first year as a head coach this year is, you know, kids go through stuff too. Absolutely. They go through stuff just like we do. And people don't realize, you know, you can look at it and say, oh, they're just a kid. But to them, remember when we were in high school with yeah. you and I, mm-hmm. that's their life right that's now. That's their, exactly. So you, we can say, oh, look, you know, man, oh. But that's all they know. Right. You know, that, so right now, it, mm-hmm. it is like a ton of bricks weighing on them when, you know, when they're stressed out. Mm-hmm. And picking back what you just said, you know, if you look at the hours you spend with your kids, a lot of times you spend more hours, a coach spends more hours than their parents. Yep. Think about it. A lot of times mm-hmm. we're after school, you know, three to five, mm-hmm. maybe three, you know, four to six, whatever. Yeah. And then a lot of times, you know, kid goes home, what does he have to do? Do his homework, right. eat dinner, then it's time to go to bed. So you think about real hours you're putting on with you, you know, as a coach, mm-hmm. you're spending more time, a lot of times, you know, valuable time exactly. with the player, with the student athlete than your actual parents are, mm-hmm. you know. So, I, I, and, and I, like I say with me, you know, a lot of times I talk about players. Majority of the time, we're not even talking about basketball. It's about life. What school? What, exactly. What's going on with school? Even, I mean, even exactly. if it, you know, I want them to open up with me. Even if it's about their girlfriend, right? Whatever. Exactly. I want them to open up with me because I'm mm-hmm. not just your coach. You know, I want to be able to have a relationship to where when we're done, that ball stops bouncing, you can call me for anything. Exactly. And that's how all my coaches have been. And that's what I – that's how – we talked about this before. That's – when I can say you're a great coach, I don't care if you win five state championships or a national championship. If you don't have a relationship with your player, to me, you're not a good coach. Anybody can be an X and O guy and, and, and recruit good talent. But if you don't have that relationship with your players, what is the point? Because no matter what, that ball will stop bouncing. 
Because mm, in college, you can be a, a good recruiter, a good businessman, oh, yeah. not a good coach. But man, clap it up, first of all, because I agree with you 1,000 million percent, man, so much. It's just, you know, and I think that's where a lot of people lack. Like you said, it's not a, yeah, you can win all these games, but are you a good coach? Bingo. And a lot of people will be like, well, hold on, is it the same? same? No, it's not no, the not same thing. I'm talking about life. Well, life yeah, coach. I've seen coaches who lost a lot of games, but they are a great coach, and exactly. they have the impact on their kids like no other. Bingo. You know, and that's what's important, the relationships that you have with your kids mm-hmm. so that they can call you when they're in trouble. Absolutely. So they're not like, oh, I can't talk to coach because he's not, he doesn't care. You know, right. he just cares about if I make this layup. Absolutely. You can't, 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 can't be like and that. And the crazy so. part about it is I back it up. If you ask any of my players, and I, I honestly, a lot of coaches don't realize if you have that relationship, they'll mm-hmm. run through a brick wall for you. Mm-hmm. It all goes head in hand. You'll win more. I mean, I've seen coaches, you know, really good coaches who had less talent Win because they had that type of relationship with their players mm-hmm. that they didn't want to dis- they didn't want to disappoint their coach. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if you're a player and you're playing for a coach you can't stand. Exactly. A lot of times, like, well, we don't, you know, you know, yeah, we'll that's care. the yep. I've but, seen but that. You, you yeah. find a player that loves their coach, they will go through a brick wall for you. Exactly, and that's the best part about it, man. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like I said, I don't just talk this. You can you literally ask any of my players if ever coach. Mm-hmm. They will never, and, they, and I yell at them. You know, I get after them, mm-hmm. but it's how you know there's a great relationship. Mm-hmm. I can yell at every single one of my players. At the end of practice, see you later, coach. Yep. They're still talking to me like I never yelled. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's the kind of relationship that a coach should have with their players where mm-hmm. it's never personal on the court. Right. But when it becomes personal is when you don't have that relationship with the coach. Exactly. Then they're yelling at me. Now they're picking on me. Oh, I don't, I don't right. like him. Mm-hmm. But if you're close with them, I can go down the line and yell at every single one of my players about mm-hmm. how they're playing on the court. Mm-hmm. And they know I still love them. Right. Mm-hmm. At the end of practice. That, you know, love you, coach. See you later. Mm-hmm. And and that's mm-hmm. that to me is it, it, you know is a true testament of a great coach. Definitely, because you know you, you your kids got to know that you're not against them. Bingo. You're not against yep. them. You are with them. You are on their team. Absolutely. You know, you're in their corner. I have a I have a shooter on my team, mm-hmm. right? And before we played any game, because I was a shooter, so I know I know the mindset. Oh, yeah. and I, before any game, before we played any game, I told him. I promise you, I guarantee you have my word. I will never take you out for missing a shot. Matter of fact, I'll never take you out for shooting one. And a lot of coaches right. would be like, whoa, that's kind of. But the reason being is a lot of kids are locked up mentally. Yes. Because they're like, okay, if I miss, am I coming out? Right. Am I coming out? And that's so true. now they're not free. Yep. You know, and as a shooter, as a basketball player in general, you got to have a free mind. You can't be afraid Absolutely. of making a mistake. Absolutely. Because then you got players that's out on the court not trying to do good, but just trying, trying not to, to do bad. bad. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? So now they're not doing 100% of what they can do. Bingo. And now they're confused. What does coach want? And you right. never want to have a player like that. And that's the like thing. You know, if, if, you, if you have a guy out there and he's thinking way too much, mm-hmm. they're never going to get the best, you know, the best. You never get the best out of that player. Exactly. Never. They'll never get the best out of their ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and I'm with you on that. I, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and Probably because I was a shooter too, I was a scorer too, you know, yes, and I know how it is to score. Mm-hmm. You know, those times where I, I start off 0 for 5, but I end up finishing the game shooting 50%. See. Continue a little while to get going. Right. And, and, and I never would take a player out the same way, you know, for, mm-hmm. for a missed shot or. Now, I'll take you out for not shooting a shot. Exactly. You know, if you miss a shot, you and, I, see and I can tell that, yeah. oh, you didn't pull the trigger because you missed and you're confident. I say, like, you know what? Right. If you don't want to take it, I'll get somebody else. Exactly. You know, so I've actually yelled at players, taking players out for not shooting the ball. Because you take you yeah. take yourself out. Take I, I won't again. take you out, but if you take you yourself out. You take yourself out of the game, might as well come on out. Exactly. But that's huge, man. And a lot of these coaches don't realize, too. It's about, you know, I'm really good. What I, I think I, one of my great qualities is as a coach mm-hmm. is, um, you know, I'm, I, I can, I'm doing a really good job at um, giving the player confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and that's something I do. You know, you could be down on yourself. Oh, blah, 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 I'm, not, I'm not making my shots. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll go and tell you, man, you're the truth. You got this. I'm the exact same you, way. You, you got this, I'm the man. Exact and, same and, um, way. And, and, and quick story, man, I, um, championship game a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. uh, my, 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 one of my best players on my team, he gets fouled. Okay, mm-hmm. he gets fouled um, in the semifinals. No time on the clock. Oh, on a three pointer. We're down by two. Oh, and you know, and I, I don't care who you are, what level mm-hmm. you get fouled with no, no seconds no on the clock. Because everybody's looking. At semifinals, and and, and 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 I credit him because this dude, he's a beast, man. He's mm-hmm. a beast. You know, his swagger's on. It's just crazy when it comes to playing. He mm-hmm. looks at me, you know, because down right in front of my bench, he says, "Coach, light work. I got this." Oh, and when he said that, you know, I was nervous for him. That was my yeah. boy. I'm nervous for him. You, know, you got to step right. up. Right. When he said that, I knew it was game over. 
But the confidence I've given him all year, you know, in himself, he's already had that confidence. But yeah. me, me tell him, look, dude, you're a beast. Now, you, know, you, you, you could definitely, you know, it, it, you know, you could do anything you want to do with, it, with this game. Mm-hmm. You know, and then by the time, you know, end of the season, he steps up to the line, mm-hmm. makes all three, all number in that game over. Mm-hmm. We go to the finals. That's you awesome. know, and, and I'll tell you right now, that right there, I mean, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough to do. That you don't care tough. if you're an NBA college right. to step up and do that. I mean, and, and, and but I love that, man. When you give these players that kind of confidence, that confidence, you know, I didn't have to say anything. He looked right at me, and this is a true story. This is light work, coach. Yelled at me. It's light work, coach. I got this. I was like, oh, this, this game over. It's when game this, over. You tell me that, I believe you. <laughs> exactly. And see, that's you said giving the kids confidence. I'm that man, I'm the exact same way because I'll be it'll be in the middle of the game. Oh yeah. And one of my players will be in front of the bench. I'm like, you know, you, you know you're a beast, right? Right. You know, you know they can't stop you, right? Yeah. You know, because they, they gotta know you're with them. That's huge. And, and, you know, and, and um, you know, on one last story, you know, my mm-hmm. I'm in college, I never forget this. My senior year, mm-hmm. um, we're playing against Georgia it's Georgia Tech. And we're kinda down this year mm-hmm. and um they're number twenty in the country. And I, I struggled this game. I mean, I'm literally, at this point, I'm 1 for 11. 1 for 11, not making anything. The mm-hmm. only shot I made was right before the end of the half. All right? So I get fouled. And um, I mean, Shumper, all right, he fouls me, okay? Playing Georgia Tech. I go up. All right, mm-hmm. we're, up we're, we're up by two points. So I make both free throws. It's like 11 seconds left. Mm-hmm. It's probably over. All right? I go up 1 and 1. Missed the first one. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm struggling. So I, I'm, and I'm like, man, go down the court. I mean, Shepard has the ball. Add insult to injury, he scores on me. <laughs> back to back. This right, happened. I'm like, oh, my right. goodness. So now it's tie game. Coach Hayes calls a timeout. So I'm, you can tell I'm down. I'm just not, you know what I mean? I don't usually get down on myself, but mm-hmm. i just been struggling. I think I blew the game for us. We get to the huddle, and I credit my coach for this. He looks at me and said, James, get your head up. You about to win this game for us. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what? Like, I'm one for 11 right now. Just missed, mm-hmm. you know, could have ended the game. He draws up a play for me to hit shoot the game winner. What do you know? We run it. We execute. I had the game winner against Georgia Tech. I'm two mm-hmm. for 12. And because that's such a crazy you know, stat line, mm-hmm. I get interviewed on first take the next morning. All right, Skip Bayless, Dana Jacobson, that's what she was on back then. You know, so cool story about giving your player confidence. Coach Hayes could have easily said, you know what, dudes, get out the game. Or I'm not giving you the ball. You ain't made a shot yet. For him right. to trust me, a guy who's one for 11, and kind of give me that confidence. When he said you're going to win this game for us, it was not a doubt in my mind I was going to win that game for us mm-hmm. because he put that confidence in me. And that's just not about basketball also. That's a life lesson. Right. You know, people you know who look up to you in life, business partners, whatever, you give them that confidence and let them know that they can do anything they want. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't have parents and, and, and people around them to give them that type of confidence that maybe that, you know, that they can actually go after the goals and the dreams they have. People, a lot of people need that. It's kind of like you say, you know, you're a beast. Right. Exactly. I mean, it was the last time somebody's told you that. You know right. what I mean? Exactly. People need that, not just with sports and life in general. Mm-hmm. You know, me, me personally, I try to pick up somebody every single day. You don't know what somebody's going, what's going on in somebody's know. life. Mm-hmm. You know, one simple phone call, giving somebody confidence, telling them, "Look, man, you know you can do it. You know you can do it. You right. can do it. Yeah. Something that simple, man. You never know. You know it, it could change someone's a simple, life. Simple. I believe in. You. I believe in. You. Just something simple like that can change someone's life, man. Mm-hmm. It really can. I believe that. Yeah. Man. And this is perfect to go with uh, the ending. I'll just tell people watching: when you feel like quitting, remember who's watching. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a millennial believer, Jay Thomas, Stu Anna with the great James Dudes. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Yeah, you want.